enterprise value is a measure of the total value of a company. It's often viewed as the cost to acquire the company. A company typically has shareholders who hold its common and preferred stock and creditors who hold debt issued by the company. So if you want to acquire the company, you would need to buy over all the common and preferred shares from the shareholders and all the debt securities from the creditors. Both are bought over at their market values, not the book value. However, when you acquire an entire company, you also acquire its cash and short-term investments, which are liquid. So actually, the total cost of acquiring a company is the market value of the common and preferred stock, plus the market value of the debt, minus any cash and short-term investments in the company's books. Since enterprise value takes into account both equity and debt of the company, it's an appropriate measure when comparing firms that have significantly different capital structures. However, one potential problem when calculating enterprise value is that the market value of a firm's debt is often not available. This can be the case where the bonds are privately issued or are not actively traded. In such cases, the analyst can use the market values of similar bonds or can use their book values. Book value, however, may not be a good estimate of market value if firm and market conditions have changed significantly since the bonds were issued. An enterprise value multiple takes the enterprise value of the firm as the numerator and the denominator can be revenue. But more often than not, the company's EBITDA is used. EBITDA is the earnings of the company before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortisation are subtracted. It's often regarded as proxy for operating cash flow because it excludes depreciation and amortisation. Because the numerator represents the values of both equity and debt, it should be compared to earnings available to both shareholders and creditors. That is why earnings before interest is used, as the interest is payments to creditors. Another advantage of using EBITDA is that it's usually positive, even when net income or cash flow is negative. Multiples like the P-E ratio are often meaningless if the denominator is negative. However, the disadvantage of using EBITDA is that it often includes non-cash revenues and expenses, so it may not be that representative of the cash available for both the debt and equity holders. So now that we've understood both the numerator and denominator of the enterprise value multiple, let's learn how to apply this method through an example. Microsoft has 1,000 outstanding common stocks and each share is currently trading at $60. The company just reported an EBITDA of $60,000 and its latest balance sheet is shown below. Using the enterprise value multiple approach, determine if Microsoft's common stock is undervalued or overvalued when compared to the industry. The industry average EV over EBITDA is 13.8 times. Let's first recall our formula for enterprise value. The market value of common stock is the stock price multiplied by the number of shares outstanding. Do not use the book value of equity on the balance sheet. There's no mention of any preferred stock on the balance sheet, so the value is zero. Likewise for debt, do not use the book value. However, it is okay to use book value for current liabilities as their market values tend to be very close to their book values as they're due soon. And cash and short-term liquid investments should be subtracted. Punch these figures into your calculator and you'll arrive at an enterprise value of $75,000 for the firm. So with that, we can divide it by $6,000, which is the EBITDA, and we get a multiple of 12.5 times. One shortcut is to simply compare this multiple to the industry average. Since this is lower than the industry average of 13.8 times, we may conclude that the firm is undervalued. 
However, notice that the question specifically referred to the common stock of the firm, not the firm as a whole. Since enterprise value encompasses more than just common stock, this shortcut may not be that appropriate. To be more precise, we should calculate the intrinsic value of the common stock using the industry average multiple. So let's back up a little. Based on the industry average multiple of 13.8 times, the intrinsic enterprise value of the firm should be $82,800. And if we rearrange the enterprise value equation, the intrinsic value of the common stock should be $67,800. That works out to $67.80 per share. Do note that when we do this, we're assuming that the firm's debt is fairly valued. So since the current share price of $60 is lower than its intrinsic value based on industry average, Microsoft's common stock is undervalued. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.